Hi there, it's Scott, nurse educator from the Central Region, and today I want to go over how to dilute and administer push-dose epinephrine. Push-dose epinephrine is a powerful vasopressor that you can administer in the field when patients are hypotensive and remain in shock despite your other interventions. Keep in mind that in order to, for push-dose epinephrine to be effective, you first need to fill the tank before you can squeeze the pump. So for instance, if you have a patient that's in septic shock, it's important that you administer your IV fluids before administering push-dose epinephrine. An exception to this rule would be if you have a patient that is hypotensive, that's shocky, that has a history of CHF or renal failure, and is showing signs of fluid overload. So we're going to have to be more judicious with the amount of IV fluids that we give them and more likely go to a presser earlier than we would for another patient. You also want to keep in mind that not all crackles mean fluid overload. So if you have a patient that has a history consistent with pneumonia, for instance, they've had fever, productive cough, and now they're hypotensive and shocky, the fact that you hear the crackles in the lungs doesn't mean that they're in fluid overload. It likely means that they are experiencing septic pneumonia, and they still should go ahead and get the full amount of IV fluids with your frequent reassessments. In LA County, that's reassessing lung sounds and perfusion status every 250 cc's. To prepare push-dose epinephrine, begin by taking your preloaded epinephrine syringe assembling it like you normally would and getting rid of any air. And remove nine milliliters of your epinephrine. We're now left with one milliliter of epinephrine. We're gonna add nine milliliters of saline to the syringe now in order to dilute it. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either attach a needle to your epi syringe and then use the medication port from your saline bag to withdraw nine cc's of saline. Or if you already have your bag primed and your tubing ready to go, you can take your lure lock port, attach your push dose epi, being sure that it's not running to the patient in case you were to accidentally give the undiluted epi. Make sure our roller clamp is open and then we're gonna withdraw, withdraw nine milliliters of saline. At this point, we have a 10 milliliter syringe with one milliliter of epinephrine or 0.1 milligrams mixed into nine milliliters of saline. This gives us a new dilution of 0.01 milligrams per milliliter or 10 micrograms per milliliter. In Los Angeles County, reference number 1207 is your treatment protocol for shock and hypotension. And there you'll find your orders for administering push dose epi. In general, for an adult, you'll give one milliliter of your diluted push dose epinephrine every one to five minutes as needed to maintain a systolic blood pressure of greater than 90. Remember that base hospital contact is required concurrently whenever you're using push dose epi, and shock and hypotension provider impressions are always base hospital contacts. So, a number of you have asked me how come you can't just take a 10 cc saline flush? get rid of one cc of saline and take your preload undiluted so your zero I'm sorry so your one milligram per 10 mls or your 0 0.1 milligram per ml and attach a needle to your saline flush and simply aspirate one cc of epinephrine so although that is a method that will still give you the same concentration of epi for your push dose, here's the problem. Which one of these contains push dose epi? One of these is a regular saline flush and the other one has epinephrine in it. So if you're using a saline flush to dilute your push dose epi, what you're doing is you're increasing the risk of an error because you may inadvertently be handed or inadvertently pick up a saline flush thinking that it's push dose epi or more dangerously, a push-dose epi thinking that it's a saline flush 
and you may push the entire amount of push dose epi into the patient all at once, thinking that you were flushing another medication with saline. So now, since we're talking about safety, a better practice still would be to mark this diluted epinephrine preload with, let's say, a piece of tape. symbolize that this has push dose epi in it or to simply write an e or maybe a p d e for push dose epi or any other symbol that would indicate to you that this is different than another preload because and that's how you dilute and administer push dose epinephrine thanks for watching